Welcome to this brief tutorial on causal reasoning. In this tutorial, we will focus on causation among specific events. And we'll take a look at two of John Stuart Mill's methods of causal reasoning. First, let's talk about claims about specific events. Causal claims about specific events involve particular people, particular situations, particular events or occurrences that happen at a specific time. These are not claims of a more general sort. For example, the cookies burnt in the oven because the temperature was set too high. This is a claim about a specific event occurring, namely these exact cookies burning in a particular oven at a particular time. Notice, I'm not talking about why all cookies burn. I'm not talking about cookies in general at all. I'm talking about a specific occurrence. And so that's why this is a claim about a specific event. Let's take a look at another example. The river overflowed yesterday because there was too much rainfall in a short period of time. In this case, I am talking about this specific ro river overflowing on a particular day. I'm not worried about why rivers overflow in general. Since I'm worried about a particular river and a particular event associated with that river, this counts as a claim about a specific event. Notice how that's different from general causal claims. General causal claims are claims of cause and effect within whole populations, not just among particular individuals. For example, smoking causes cancer. This claim means in a population in which everyone smokes, we expect to see more cancer than in a population in which no one smokes. Notice I'm not talking about any particular person getting cancer, and I'm not talking about any particular person smoking. The claim is general, not specific. Another example, overexposure to UV radiation causes skin damage. In this particular claim, I'm talking about general populations being exposed to UV radiation and experiencing more skin damage than in populations in which no one is exposed to UV radiation. Again, notice I'm not talking about any particular people here or any specific instances of skin damage. Or let's take a claim like vitamin C decreases the likelihood of getting colds. In this case, I'm not talking about whether or not Mary got a cold. I'm not talking about whether Bob takes vitamin C. I'm not talking about any specific person or any specific case of a cold. Instead, if this claim is true, all it would mean is that in a population in which everyone takes vitamin C, we would expect to see fewer colds than in a population in which no one takes vitamin C. This counts as a general causal claim. When we're talking about causation among specific events, or we're trying to find the cause of a particular effect, it's useful to employ John Stuart Mill's methods of experimentation, or methods of causal reasoning. John Stuart Mill was a British philosopher who was born in 1806 and died in 1873. In his work, System of Logic, he came up with five different methods of causal reasoning. In this tutorial, we will discuss two of those methods. Let's take a look at Mill's method of agreement reasoning. In method of agreement reasoning, we're looking at multiple occurrences of an effect, and we're trying to figure out what causes that effect to happen on all those different e occasions. In essence, we're looking for similarities among all these instances. In order to look for similarities, we of course need more than one occurrence of the effect. Let's take a look at an example of this. The dog was extra sleepy on Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday. I wonder why. In this case, the effect that I'm worried about is the dog being extra sleepy. 
And notice this effect is occurring on three different occasions, Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday. If I engage in method of agreement reasoning, I have to find other things that are also happening on Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday, and see if those things can account for the dog being sleepy. Let's let's say it's the case that we went to the dog park on each of those days. Now I've established a similarity. There's a similarity between going to the dog park and the dog being extra sleepy on Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday. Let's say it's also the case that we did not go to the dog parks on any of the other days of the week. So in that case, I can say that going to the dog park has probably made my dog sleepy. I have established an agreement between a cause and effect over multiple occasions. Can I be positive that going to the dog park caused my dog to be sleepy? Of course not. But in this form of causal reasoning, we're not going to achieve absolute certainty. The best that we can go for is likelihood or probability. Now let's take a look at method of difference reasoning. With method of difference reasoning, we are concerned with what caused a particular event to occur at a particular time, but not at other times. In essence, we're looking for differences between when the effect is not present and when the effect is present. In order to compare in this way, we need at least one instance of the effect that we can compare with times when the effect is not in existence. Let's take a look at an example of this. Why am I sneezing today? Notice I'm concerned with sneezing just today, not sneezing generally speaking. In this case, I'm going to look for other things that are happening just today. In other words, I'm looking for other things that are different about today. Let's say it's also the case that I did an unusually high amount of cleaning and kicked up a whole bunch of dust today. I don't usually do this massive cleaning. It's really just today that I'm doing this cleaning. In that case, I have to determine whether cleaning and kicking up dust is relevant to sneezing. In other words, can cleaning and kicking up dust cause sneezing? Sure it can. So in this case, I've isolated a difference. Let's take a look at another example. Why am I so sick today? Notice I'm not worried about why I get sick in general. I'm not worried about sickness on other occasions. I'm worried about what has caused this difference, this sickness, on this occasion. And so, in order to engage in method of difference reasoning, I'll look for other things that are different about today. Let's say it's the case that I ate this large pizza all by myself earlier today. I don't normally eat a large pizza all by myself, and so that's another thing that is different about today. Now that I've established this other difference, I have to ask myself, is eating pizza relevant to getting sick? Sure. So in that case, I can be reasonably assured that eating the pizza all by myself made me feel ill. Can I be absolutely positive? No. But again, we're trying to establish high probabilities. We're not going to be able to establish certainty with this method of reasoning. Let's summarize what we've learned in this tutorial. In this tutorial, we've covered method of agreement reasoning, in which we look for similarities among multiple occurrences of an effect. And we've learned about method of difference reasoning, in which we look for some factor that is present when the effect is present, but not present when the effect is not present. In other words, we're looking for differences to account for this other difference called an effect. These are only two of Mill's methods of reasoning. However, these two methods of causal reasoning are the most widely used methods. Good luck on the exercises associated with this tutorial.